Morning, everyone. Thanks, Paul. It's always wonderful to be with you. And uh, I've learned something this morning. I genuinely thought that Pastor Paul could be in two places at the same time. <laughs> so I don't know about you, I've learned something. Um, but actually what I admire about uh, Pastor Paul and Max is their incredible ability to raise up leaders. He's a 2 Timothy 2 leader, isn't he? And the reason he appears to be in more than one place at the same time is because he's invested in other leaders who are faithfully doing the work. So that's part of the reason why I just love Lighthouse and our partnership with Lighthouse. I think we're kindred spirits in terms of that sense of calling to, to multiplication. So I'm so excited. I said in the first service, I have a, if, if the Lord ever leads me to return to the UK, you might find me in your membership class uh, at, at some point because I just love being here and it's just been so rejuvenating worshiping with you uh, this morning. So thank you. And thank you for your partnership uh, in mission with us in South Africa over a number of years now. And it would be remiss of me before turning to the word not to give you a bit of an update on what's happening with the Message Trust. Um, many of you will have, have seen updates before. You know of the Message Trust in Manchester. Ten years ago, uh, I was tasked to start a branch of the Message Trust uh, in South Africa. Um, and it's exciting times uh, for us. I've got a couple of slides to show you. Uh, the first one, though, is, is the best one because it's my family. There they are. Um, that's uh, Christina. Uh, at the bottom right there, uh, I, I think I'm allowed to say, recently turned 40. We celebrated her 40th birthday. Uh, but our 14-year-old daughter, you can see, is a little bit taller than her now um, as well. Uh, the back right is Samuel. He just turned 18. Uh, and Caleb is at the left there. He just turned 20. Uh, and then a couple of amazing things happened in lockdown. Uh, you see, I went through a midlife crisis with my facial hair. Um, lost, some of, lost some of my sight and got glasses. But the really good thing that happened in lockdown uh, was the birth of Faith, um, our, our daughter, our beautiful daughter. She's now two and a half. Uh, she was a lockdown baby. She's just, she's just delightful. Uh, so thank you for your prayers uh, for, Emily, for our family. It's a real privilege to be serving the Lord. And uh, as you'll hear, there's some changes happening, but we're staying in Cape Town, uh, and God is really blessing us in, in so many ways. But please... Please pray for us um, as well. Um, in terms of the message and what's happening with our ministry, I think the best thing to do, you've been investing into the, into the, in support of the work of the message in South Africa for a number of years. So I thought this video gives you kind of a catch-all of, of what's happening with the message uh, in South Africa. So please enjoy this next couple of minutes on the screen. Who are we? We are gospel-centered art with one vision mission in schools on stages on the streets and in prisons we are a movement of the unashamed untamed unconventional unshaken truth that is one name jesus we are a kingdom community spelt one word eden might catch us in an office building nine to five then in the corner of your neighborhood five to nine because it's more than comfortable living, it's 24-7 life online. It says, I would live for this cause rather than mine. We are broken people with a united cause. An undivided love in a divided society proclaiming Jesus as Lord. More than just performances for applause, we are a community to the fractured and the poor. Where ex-drug dealers find freedom in Christ. Where suicide runs to hide, where death turns to life. When the local thief becomes the urban hero and 100 crimes become zero. We are transformed lives, transforming lives. We are God-shaped enterprise. Where ex-prisoners and addicts find their home and become more than ever dreamed or hoped. Because in the world saying, I can't do it, we say, yes, you can. You can take a stand, find who you're meant to be, discover your identity in the maker's plan. Because we won't sit back once a generation dies. We advance through your city proclaiming real life. We train up the next generation to effectively proclaim Christ. We are a movement of laid down lies, refusing to hide. We go beyond music and take people higher. We're not about fame or being admired. From ones and twos to venues filled with thousands, we unashamedly proclaim Jesus. This is more than a job. We are born for this. We are called to this. To every time. 
time, race, face, and nation. We are community transformation, equipping identity proclamation. We are conveying the gospel with word and action, transforming lives, calling the next generation to rise. We are the message. Thanks. Thanks for your partnership. And we're going through a really exciting time uh, of uh, multiplication at the message. There's a, there's a slide that kind of encapsulates who we are as the message with these four spheres. If we can have that slide up. Um, of uh, creative mission, bold proclamation of the gospel alongside community transformation, engaging in some of the toughest communities, discipling young people. And in Cape Town, that's been in gang-infested and, and tough neighborhoods across Cape Town. Alongside that, we've been developing our prisons and enterprise stream, which is taking those that the world has really written off and helping them reintegrate once they've come to Christ and, and become productive members of society, uh, following Jesus in faith and life. And then the fourth element is as we are uh, learning these things, we're doing equipping and training. How do we mobilize the church uh, to continue to, to gain ground for the kingdom in cities and communities across South Africa and now beyond? There's a picture should come up next. Um, and uh, just a very, very quick testimony. The guy in the middle there, his name is Kanti. Uh, he's 21 years old. Um, I think we've been known historically for our work with former gang members and people who've come out of prison. What I love about Kanti is we got to know Kanti when he was 14, 15 years old. He was living in one of the toughest neighborhoods. It's actually Nyanga, known as the murder capital of Cape Town. It's a tough, tough neighborhood. And he was at the heart of that community. And he joined our community hub at our partner church. He had a love for football and he was following Jesus. And Kanti didn't go the way of the others. He has faithfully continued to serve Jesus. He graduated from school. He is now at university studying megatronics. And he's got a call on his life. You know what his call is? His call is to stay. He's still in Nyanga. He spends his time mentoring young people in their, uh, uh, in their education, supporting them. He's got a dream that out of Nyanga, there will be future doctors, future engineers, future scientists, all Christ-centered. That's a multiplication of leadership, uh, isn't it? So pray, he got our Urban Hero Award uh, last year just for the incredible influence he's having. That's my dream. We want to see people like Clancy mobilized uh, into some of the toughest communities across uh, the continent. Uh, another leader you'll see on the next slide is Sean. Uh, Sean's been part of the message for some time. And last year in May, we made the announcement that Sean is my successor. He is actually, I'm now the former CEO of The Message South Africa. From January the 1st, Sean was the current and continuing CEO of The Message South Africa. As someone from Cape Town, he's now overseeing the work uh, and he's doing a phenomenal job. Uh, so pray for Sean, uh, because this is for me been the dream that we would see a generation of leaders rise up through the vehicle of The Message, but to partner with local churches for the, for the cause of the kingdom uh, across the continents. So now my task, as Paul mentioned, is to raise my eyes. Uh, the next slide kind of shows amazing Africa. Well, Africa is a continent of 1.2 billion people. Um, it is the youngest continent of the world. I've actually, I actually quickly looked up the, uh, the, the statistics. Let's see if I've got it here. Oh, okay, give me one sec. Uh, 1.216 billion people. Uh, 77% of Africa's population is under the age of 35. That's 957 million young people and young adults in the continent. That's a harvest field and a half, um, isn't it? But it's the only continent where there's been this youth bulge. And as the church, we've got to respond to that. We've got to call people to the cause of Jesus Christ faithfully following him. This could be the, the greatest mission sending moment out of Africa that could impact the rest of the world. So my job uh, as I've joined the Message Global team working with Andy Hawthorne is to look at new strategic hubs around Africa to raise up more leaders uh, that, that can take what we've learned as the message and take it to some of the toughest urban areas across the continent. And we want to light fires for the gospel. 
and we want to we want to see uh, the Holy Spirit burn upon people's lives so that they can have an impact into some of the toughest places in the continents. What does that look like? I don't know yet, um, but pray for us. Uh, that God will lead us and guide us, and we're excited for the continued partnership. We, we are your hands and feet in South Africa and now into other parts of Africa as God is calling us, and your ministry is expanding from here, I know, already into all the corners of the world, and I just want to honor you and, and thank you for that. So please keep us in prayer. If you want to know any more about the message, there is a resource table at the back. Uh, Andy is there. You can chat to him. If you want to get news from me, um, and receive my mail shots and my blogs. There's a, you can sign up uh, for my emails on the mailing uh, sheet there. And then we've got a couple of resources. Um, Andy Hawthorne's written a new book called A Burning Heart based on 1 Corinthians, always solid teaching uh, from, from Andy. And some of you know some of my story about losing my first wife uh, and the remarriage to Christina, which actually happened in this church. Um, I wrote a book really as a testimony of God's grace to me in the six-month period after losing my first wife. Uh, and this story has been a blessing to many people who are facing difficult challenges. Uh, so if you want to pick up a copy of that, then uh, they're for sale at, at the back um, there as well. And my wife's CD. She's not here in person. I'm so sorry that she's not here to sing for you. Um, so if you want it, if you still have a CD player or it is on iTunes, uh, then you can get hold of that. Um, but um, I gave away a copy in the first service. I think I need to give away a copy in the second service. First hand up that wants it. Uh, I'm going to go to the back. It never goes to the people at the back, does it? So here you go. God bless you. <laughs> Hope you enjoy that.